You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube. Politics aside, man. Anyone from Riyadh or grew up in Riyadh, you know, like myself, I in the streets, you feel me? Not the good people. I'm talking about, you know, you know, these be the most gangster people you meet in life. And it goes back historically. See, people from Jeddah, Mecca, them areas, the religious areas, holy areas, they're holy people. Good people, they're chill. The people from Riyadh are always warriors. Why is that? Quick history lesson. This, this place you call Saudi Arabia, establishment, is 93 years old. Before that, well, really, before, before that, it was a big old desert full of tribes. Tebi, Mutari. Al Saud, Al Sheikh, and this extended all the way down to where Qatar, UAE, Kuwait. It was a big old desert, the Arabian Peninsula, or the Arabian Island. Who controlled what? In the early stages, it was this tribe, that tribe, and for a long time. You know, music over there will tell you, the historians will tell you. They try to hide certain parts because it, 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 you'll see why. But um, it was this tribe, that tribe. Today they invade you, wipe the men, take the women. Uh, you get it, all right? And it continued during the times of the prophet after. Later on came the Ottoman Empire, which I think is modern day Turk Turkey, right? That's this empire was expanding all over the place, like a British Empire. Except they were Muslim ish, I guess. In what we call today's Arabia, which was founded under Abdulaziz Al Saud. Bin means someone's son. Okay, so George Bush, George Bin Bush, the son of Bush. Why do why does it why, why does that said like that? Because it comes from tribal times. So, oh yeah, I'm from the tribe of Bush, Bunny Bush, Bin Bush, Saw Bin Laden. It's really Laden, but Bin is like the son of. That's what it means. Muhammad Bin Salman. And it goes back to tribal times. So why are they more gangster in Riyadh than Jeddah and cool stuff? All right, boom. So, like I told you, certain tribes, this is the Arabian story. The reason there's a sword in this flag of Saudi Arabia, there's a reason for that. This sword was used to take control of what you know as Arabia. Basically, it was like this. I'm going to tell it to you as street as I can. Right? No big words. Boom. Hey, gang. How about instead of fighting each other all the time, how about we all come together, be allies? Just like me in the rap game. Ha, ha, ha. And just like me in the rap game, some people say, yeah, I'm with you, bro. We get money together. We all eat. Yeah. And some people want to beef. Nah. Who are you? Why would I join you? But people. Shing. That's what the sword was for. For them people. So... Again, why, why are they gangsta in Riyadh to this day? More harsh, more feisty, aggressive. And Jeddah's cool. Culturally, not because of Mecca and Medina. That's part of it. But because this gang waged this offer all across this peninsula. You with me? 
or do I got to invade you? Some got invaded, some joined until they took over this whole place. It was called the Kingdom of Nejd and Hejaz. Modern day Saudi Arabia happens to be the birthplace of Islam. It is where Prophet Muhammad came up, spread his message. It is where Mecca and the areas of pilgrimage or Hajj, where all Muslims fly from all over the world to come see, they go to Arabia for that. Before the founding of the current kingdom of Saudi Arabia as we know it, even when this desert was ruled under, you know, parts here by the Ottoman Empire and whatnot, the people always practice Islam. The areas closest to the birthplace of Islam practice a moderate version of Islam. These parts closest to Mecca, Medina, were known as Hijaz, and the parts closest to, to modern day Riyadh were full of warriors. These were called Nizd. Before Saudi Arabia was Saudi Arabia, and it was a bunch of tribes, it was called the Kingdom of Nizd and Hijaz. This was took over by the people closest to Nizd. And that is why Riyadh is the capital of Saudi Arabia and not Mecca and Medina. Okay? In fact, the cultures are very different. To this day, Mecca and Medina remain full of different cultures, diversity, and the Islam practiced around there is way more moderate than the um, Islam preached and practiced in the capital where the government headquarters are, you know, the main body. Now, at the capital, uh, the people of Nazd, who, uh, you know, modern day Riyadh areas or whatnot, they built their kingdom and their propaganda machine, their mouthpiece, to be the religious figureheads who gave the rulers the stamp of approval in the eyes of the people who were and are religious. Think of it like Takashi 69 and Treyway. Takashi had rainbow hair, but he could have said whatever. He's still a gangster. What? Yeah, he got Treyway with him. He got the stamp of approval. You see what I'm saying? So to this day, the king and the crown prince, their second uh, slogan slash nickname is the servant of the two holy mosques. That is referring to the mosques in Mecca and Medina, you know, the holy Islamic sites. You know, this title used to be, before it was servant, it used to be the protector. You know, in the times of it was wars and all that. And, you know, obviously it would lead most people to want to side with the protector of these holy sites. And if you go against the protector of these holy sites, you're going against these holy sites. Therefore, it was halal to chop your head off. You see where I'm going? So Islam was repurposed to extend and approve of the powers on top of Arabia. Today, the capital of Saudi Arabia is, is, is uh, Riyadh. Capital today is Riyadh. That's Nezd. This is Nezd area. Riyadh, capital city. That's where the government is. That's where, where people are harsh, feisty, warrior. And you can understand why. Because it used to be war 24-7 all day. <laughs> you versus him. Hejaz, they had the Islam and the Islamic tourism. It was more a little uh, peaceful. And some people, some Muslims, they be so strict. They're like... You must be strict. Sharia law. We must. We have want Sharia law. No, you don't. You don't want Sharia law. And I'll tell you why later. But they think that that's how the prophet was. 
it was supposed to be a religion of peace. It was. The aggression and the aggressive versions of the feisty came from warriors in wartime, which were not even in that area to protect themselves. They were all the way out there in this area. And if you want to talk about the caliphate, Omar, Ottoman, Ottoman was a politician. Muhammad, Jesus, and Omar were not politicians. They came with a, a message with really esoteric meanings that was repurposed by politicians later on to either make you strict, make you bend over and follow a ruler. Really, that's just true. It made me hate religion. Later on, I came back. I fell in love with it all over again when I really understood that these these were parables and metaphors to deliver messages and, and, and lessons, not to enforce swords and stuff. You sure you want Sharia law? You sure you want to? You see, you know, injustice happens statistically everywhere. So what if you get wrongfully accused of some, but instead of doing a few years and saying it is what it is, you come out missing an arm or worse, a head. It's a real lot that you ask for. So strict, we need it. Yeah, you need it. Shit. There's a lot of people who get wrongfully accused of M U R D E R. 20 years later, oh, I was innocent. Whoops. Them people get a second chance. 20 years later or whatever, they get some. But what about where they chop heads? <laughs> Whoops. Can't have that come out. That's a real law for you. In theory, it sounds great. <sighs> but you don't want it because... First of all, the sword that chops heads, the reason that was inserted in the religion, because where in Quran does it say chop a head off? That was inserted. The sword was like a gun today. It's a weapon. Wagner versus the army. Sudan, they took over the government with a gun. It's a weapon. That's all it is. It has no place in religion. And sure, in theory, Sharia law, you chop off the people who take a life. But you know who else they chop off? When you declare your country a Muslim country, you just wipe away the right of you to make an opinion against the ruling power, whoever it may be. You know how they justify chopping heads of people who are political dissidents, critics, you know how? Listen here, Muslim guy. Oh, you are saying that um, you are critiquing the country of God, aka Islam, and, and you're going on the side of the kufar, whoever else here. Insert anybody, because this hat is made to fit whoever is opposing you. So you are opposing God by, therefore, so we should uh, try to harm the country of God. And next thing you know, chop the head off. What? God didn't say put your real law. You did. You did because someone told you along the way you're supposed to. I got a separate video for that, but... I get pissed off. I see Americans. There was a guy. He changed his opinion because he got to say the Arab money. But before he tasted the Arab money, he's a politician. Forget him. He said, if you go to Saudi Arabia, you are betraying the victims of 9-11. Huh? It's just, America's after today, I don't care what the politicians and them, their reasons of being quiet, but I'm sick of it. 
And MBS is sick of it, and he spoke up. But I'm sick of y'all putting your fingers, dirty fingers. Yes, dirty. And I love Americans, but I got to say this. Arabia, ter- terrorism, 9-11. You did 9-11. Y'all found out. Sure. Most of the people who did that were Saudi. In the case, sure. The missing paper, the declassified missing document, I'm going to tell you why it's missing. Because it's really simple, bro. I don't know what's on the paper, but I'll tell you this. I don't know if 9-11 was a conspiracy. I don't. But I'll tell you it's not a conspiracy. Al-Qaeda was created by Saudi Arabia and the USA. Equally responsible. In fact, if there was no USA, there would be no Al-Qaeda. Saudi wouldn't have... Saudi really helped y'all. What are you talking about? This ain't no conspiracy theory. The year 1979, the Soviets invade Afghanistan. Soviet Union, Russia, the Ops. They invade Afghanistan, a Muslim country. U.S. and Arabia always been best of friends. Got turned to y'all homies over there in Saudi. And just like people from nice warriors, you always got to have each other back. So they had y'all back and used the, the power they had and control in the minds of the people. This, this, uh, they're the number one influencer, uh, leader in terms of religion and everything in the Arab world slash Muslim world. It's where everyone looks to get there. It's a holy land. So when the Holy Land told you that you go to heaven if you go do jihad, which, by the way, jihad wasn't terrorism at the point. They told you to go fight people, the Soviets, for U.S. benefit and Arabian interests, of course. Everything that happened after you went and in between, a lot of people came back. And they just hush hush because there is no freedom of speech in Arabia anyway. Right? But you ended up creating Al Qaeda. You gave them the money and the training and the guns. Al Qaeda led to this, this led to that, ISIS, all that. This was a creation I did. I'm not pointing the blame. I just don't like put people sit up here and say, Really? Arabia. Y'all both as guilty as each other. If you're going to point fingers, point them at the... That's all I'm saying. And I feel confident enough to say this because Arabia, for a long time, they knew that the U.S. was in... in, in, in they had a chocolate on their fingers, too. Pop! But they couldn't say it because of interests and because it helps to serve. It's like a little backroom handshake. In public, they say, they're the bad guy. And they do. In public, they say, you're the bad guy. Sure, I'll be the bad guy. Everyone needs the bad guy to say, you're the bad guy. You know, Tony Montana? But behind the closed doors, millions of dollars, business, they're both happy. America turned their eye, a blind eye, to the human rights violations at the time. So let's not play stupid. Islam is not supposed to be strict. In fact, God in the Quran spoke of moderation in anything. Being super strict won't get you a special place in heaven. Being a dickhead was not mentioned to be repulsive. In fact, you get sins for that. I was repulsed by Islam for years because of people like y'all. So fix up. Hit like, 
it's my subscribe, and you don't want to realize. You just think you do because you've been made to think that. The clerics responsible of scholars and Islam and Hadith, these are the same people that when Saudis beef in Iran, and I quote, he came out and said, Iran, our Iranians are not Muslims. He's the same person that said playing chess is forbidden. Woman driving is haram and tried to say it hurts the ovaries. But when the king, the new one, came with a different view, they overnight flipped their views and came up with equally justifications. Now he said, foreign media is haram. But booty shaking, hey for Wahbi. Say, okay. Hit likes my sub. Peep the next one. It's related. You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube.